Hi, I'm Lee Syracuse, and I'll be talking today about the Crooks Mansion and the family that lived there many years ago. Mr. Crooks was a very dignified man, over six feet tall, very popular in the community. He owned the only movie theater in Benicia. I believe he owned a bank and possibly other ventures that I don't know of. But he was a mayor for many, many years and very, very popular. He built a house called Crooks Mansion, which still is probably the biggest house in Benicia. It's interesting, the doors actually roll back into the frame of the structure itself. I'm talking about the inside of the building now. And when all doors are pushed back, literally the whole first floor, which is already a big area, becomes one larger area, only, should we say, reduced by maybe the kitchen on one end and a staircase. It is a big open area in a cruciform form. I guess if anyone would ever look at Mr. Crooks or Mayor Crooks in his heyday, you probably would say he has everything. He has a mansion, he has a movie house, he has a bank, he has a wife and three children. At the beginning that may have been the case, but uh, ultimately things changed quite a bit. The story goes back to M Mr. and Mrs. Crooks trying to decide if the younger boy in their family could have a bicycle. Mr. Mr. Crooks was very much against it. Mrs. Crooks wanted her son to have a bicycle and she went behind her husband's back and bought the bicycle. The child took the bicycle out and was killed. After that, my husband and wife no longer spoke. He lived on the second floor of the mansion and she lived on the first. The children, the two remaining children, were used as carriers. They, they ran from one level to the other level, carrying messages for their mom and dad. It was not a happy household. Ultimately, the older son, who was spoiled, I assume, uh, was given a sports car. He went into San Francisco for a weekend and came back by, by Martinez heading for the ferry boat. He lost control of the car and he died. This left Alice, who was a school teacher ultimately, and ultimately she also left the house and moved across the street, staring at this decaying mansion. That's how I first saw it many years ago. A huge, huge, beautiful Queen Anne mansion in decay. In fact, it, People used to refer to it as the, um, I'm trying to remember the term now. It had to do with uh, a ghost mansion or a Halloween mansion, that kind of thing. In fact, one year it was used as a Halloween mansion or a spook mansion and people would pay to get into it, walk around, also observing the amount of decay, the walls which were stripped, the fireplaces were gone, it was a sad example. And here's Alice living across the street in the basement of a house looking at this grand building. I should also mention that there was also a lot of foliage and plant materials. So when you walked onto the site, you were looking at sort of a, a jungle. And in the middle of this jungle was a Victorian. Finally, a woman named Z. Lopez a very popular lady in the community and also a business lady bought the mansion and put a new roof on it. This saved the building. The, the, the case stopped because the water could no longer flow straight through the ceiling onto the floors. Ultimately, a, a family came by and they restored it and it's now a beautiful, probably one of the most beautiful Queen Anne Victorian buildings in the whole area, if not the whole Bay Area. Thank you.